started there in 2011 and I graduated in 2015 and it's been about two and a half years since I've been there so I'm gonna go up stay in a little cabin outside of Fredonia and I'm gonna try and hit some old college spots that we frequented frequent frequented went to a frequent um, so I am making my first stop at Starbucks to get some breakfast and then I am on my way. So the rest of the journey is to be had and will unfold. So come along with me on my journey to Fredonia. shop which is in Cuba New York and it was always a stopping point for me on my way to and from school and they just have like tons of cheeses um, different products always a nice bathroom stop and I found dill pickle popcorn and some beef sticks so where I'm staying does not have a fridge so I just am gonna get some snacky stuff and yeah I love this shop and I highly recommend it. So, if you're ever in the area, check out Cuba Chew Shop. So this is like my first time making a video of like going out, doing life with me. Um, so I figured I, like I stated earlier, I wanted to take you on a trip with me to Fredonia where I went to college. And so um, I just walked out of Cuba Chi Shop and I ended up actually getting rainbow popcorn, which I thought was super fun. I got the dill pickle popcorn because I love dill pickle flavor and beef stick. I'm always a sucker for um, beef sticks, turkey sticks, um, any kind of jerky. So I picked up some goodies and um, yeah, so... tomorrow so just a quick little trip but 
I just wanted to share a little bit of my story about um, why Fronia means so much to me and why I'm coming here. So in 2011, I graduated high school. Fredonia, SUNY Fredonia was the only college that I applied to and uh, the only college I got accepted to and wanted to study music therapy. Funny story with that, didn't work out. I auditioned, didn't get in the program, kind of was lost my first semester, not really sure what God wanted me to do, but um, eventually I found education. So I jumped into early childhood, childhood education and um, graduated in 2015. But during my time in college, uh, you know, Fredonia is three hours away from my parents. And so it was my first time being away from home for that long, basically like living on my own. And I was really blessed to have the experience that I did at Fredonia, even though I am knee deep in debt, um, which is very unfortunate. Um, I won't get into that, but um, I would not, honestly, have traded my experience at Fredonia for anything. I would not have traded my journey, um, being there, meeting the people I did, learning about myself, discovering who I am. It's really where I found myself, to be honest, and where I found the Lord. Um, so I, <clears throat> I want to say 2000, yeah, it was 2013. My life was falling apart. I was a junior in college in my fall semester and I was, I was in rough shape mentally, uh, emotionally, spiritually. I needed help and I had some great friends. I am so thankful for the friends that I made in college. Um, yeah, just super grateful um, for having the friends that I did. Um, met my best friend in Ethic College. Uh, we were roommates for three years. Um, and honestly, like I would not have, yeah, I wouldn't be the same person I am today without her. So shout out to you, Nanette. Love you. Um, yeah, just so thankful. Like God has done so much um, in our friendship and I would not be where I am without her. So, um, yeah, so I had a really great group of friends. Um, shout out to Barbara, Joy, Alex, Maggie, T, Justin, Cody, um, Alana, Celia. If I'm missing anybody, I love you. Um, all of my university peeps, um, so thankful to have met you. Um, like, honestly, these people just marked my life, and I'm so thankful for them. Um, so, yeah, Fredonia was a huge part of me developing into who I am as a person. And when I was a junior in college, like I said, in 2013, my life was falling apart and I needed help really bad. Um, I had always struggled with mental health and anxiety, but things were really, like, really coming to a point where I could not deal with them anymore. Um, the anxiety was so bad. I was experiencing a lot of triggers, a lot of trauma was coming up from my past. And like I said, I needed help. So I found some counseling. Um, I started sharing my struggles, um, reached out to friends, like really had solid support people in my life. And I'm so thankful for them. Like it was God's grace um, that they were in my life. So but all of that was happening while I was at school and I went home for winter break that year um, and I had to drive three hours home by myself, right? And I was in such mental agony, I didn't know how I was going to honestly drive home. Like it was so bad. It was, it was to the point where I was ready to uh, uh, admit myself to the psych ward. Um, but felt very uh, alone and didn't know what to do because I was at college, like away from my family. And so I really needed, I wanted
wanted to get back home, right? Like I wanted to get back home and, um, you know, I was sharing my struggles with people, but I don't think people realize like how, how bad it was mentally. Like, I mean, I was just in this constant state of anxiety, like could not think straight. My mind was like a mess. Um, if you know anything at all about OCD, I struggled with, uh, OCD in this, um, not with like having to have everything a certain way and organized, um, even though I am very organized in that sense, um, I had obsessive uh, intrusive thoughts. And so these intrusive thoughts would come, like thoughts that weren't um, desires of mine or things that I wanted to do, but they were very scary. Um, always felt very out of control. Like I thought I was going to do something bad, like all the time. Um, and there's a lot uh, that goes into that. Um, a lot of like spiritual components, I think, that were tied to that, um, that resulted in this OCD. But I also definitely believe that I had a chemical imbalance. Um, there's a history of anxiety in my family. And so um, I, yeah, my mind was a mess. I was driving home for winter break. And I, by the grace of God, got home. Like, literally, it was Jesus. He got me home because it was really, really bad. Um, and so, as I got home, I shared with my mom, like, how much I was struggling and that I wanted to go to the psych ward, right? And my mom was like, absolutely not. We're praying for you right now. And um, she prayed for me. Things started to lift. And that was, like, the beginning of this, like, breakthrough that I would start to walk into. Um, later rededicated my life to the Lord, um, was baptized in the Holy Spirit and, um, have been walking with the Lord, like me and him consistently by the grace of God for like almost eight years. Uh, it's coming up on my eight year anniversary. And so it's just remarkable, like honestly, how good God is and how gracious he is and how consistent and how faithful he is to his people. Like I could tell you story upon story and maybe someday I'll get into all those stories. Um, but coming here this weekend, visiting Fredonia is going to be really special and I'm excited to see what God is going to do. Um, sharing part of that testimony with the mental health that I dealt with. You know, I can testify now that it's been eight years since I have had an anxiety attack, a uh, panic attack, um, been in a state of fear. Like, of course, little fears come up every now and then, but like, I've been able to battle them with the Lord and it's been amazing. Like, so, my life is so different. It's so different because Jesus, honestly, it's Jesus all the way. Um, and so that's part of my story. There's so much more I could share. Um, but that's why Fredonia means so much to me is because when I came back to school after that winter break, I stopped taking the medication that I was prescribed, which let me just tell you that medicine saved me. Like it, God used it to help me stabilize, like honestly. So I am a proponent of medication. If you are struggling with mental health, please get help. Um, consult a medical professional. They they are skilled and they know what to do. Um, and I will also say that, um, you know, I knew that I didn't want to be dependent on medication. I didn't want to use it my whole life. I really wanted to see what God could do, right? And so I stopped taking the medication, came back to school, was still struggling somewhat. Um, mentally, but the Lord really started healing me and like helping me to work through these mental triggers and, um, all the things that I was struggling with. It was literally like a few months that God just like walked me through this healing process. And, um, yeah, again, so much more I could share about that, but I will say that God is powerful. God is faithful. He loves you. He has a plan for you and he knows what you need. Like he knows what we need when we need it. Like there's no one like our God. There's literally no one like Jesus. Nobody, nobody.
nobody like Jesus. And I can testify to the fact that he is a faithful, faithful, faithful father. Like, whoo. So, all of that to say, um, I'm coming up to Fredonia uh, shortly. So, I'm going to hop off here. But um, I hope you were blessed by that testimony. And, um, yeah, that you enjoy the rest of this video. freshman dorms and there's the girls freshman dorm and when I came here for freshman orientation um, that is where I stayed and we had a bunch of outdoor stuff over here so this is where I lived my senior year and upstairs is the dining hall um, which we used to go to pretty often but Starbucks was my spot <laughs> so I'm gonna hit that up again um, I already had some this morning, but I'm gonna get something because I'm thirsty again. And I gotta go to the bathroom, and then I'm gonna go in the bookstore. Look for a hoodie. myself a sweater and got myself some more Starbucks and I'm walking campus at the moment reminiscing a little bit just thinking about uh, my life here and what it was like and um, just how the Lord met me in this place um, yeah there's something about going away for college and I was always excited about going on adventures and traveling. Um, I still am. And um, I uh, can't recommend it enough. And I'm so thankful that God used me going away from home for college um, to draw me closer to him. So I'm going to walk campus a little bit more and just remember how good and how faithful he's been. So <laughs> this building is called Jewett Hall and um, I don't really know if it's used anymore. Um, it looks like there might be some uh, offices, uh, classes in here. But so when I started here, I had my first 8 a.m. class in this building and it was um, Science. I don't remember exactly what. I think it was like science. I don't even know. But it was like basic science, right? And um, it was my first 8 a.m. And I remember being a freshman walking into this uh, building. And uh, I walked in a couple minutes after 8 o'clock. And um, the teacher basically was like, um, and it's very unprofessional to come into a class after uh, the class has started, so you need to be on time. And I sat down in my seat and said, I will never take an 8 a.m. class again. So um, that was my experience at Jewett Hall with my 8 a.m. class freshman year. Thank you. 
So I tried to get into Mason Hall, which is the music hall, because I spent quite a bit of time in there. Not as much as a music major would have um, or did, but I spent a lot of time in practice rooms worshiping the Lord. And I wanted to get in there, um, but it was locked. So, darn. But now I'm going to walk around over by the dorms. Okay, so another funny story. I think it was my freshman year, again, I was walking along this pathway to go back to my dorm. <clears throat> and at the time, I think, I think I lived in, I must have lived in Casling, or maybe Huntingway at this point. And I am literally like walking, trying to walk back to campus. And it was so windy that I was like, literally like the wind was pushing against me, like pushing me back. And I was literally fighting the wind, trying to get back. It's pouring. And I get back to my dorm and I am like drenched and soaked. It took everything within me to like walk against that wind. And I get back to my dorm and find out later that there was a confirmed tornado like nearby. So I literally walked through a tornado my freshman year. It still pops up on my memories on Facebook like every year. I think it was actually in November, honestly, because it like just popped up in my memories not too long ago. And so I like to laugh about it <laughs> because I literally walked through a tornado. And that's life in Western New York, honestly. It's so windy up here. So, oh, found a black squirrel. Wish I could zoom in. Those things are all, all over the place here. Oh, you see him? There he goes. Well, I had to put a hat on because it's freezing out here. But <clears throat> I'm currently walking over to Disney Hall, which is where I spent two years, my sophomore and junior year. And like I said earlier, my junior year was a really hard year, at least the first half of my fall semester. And um, this is where God met me. Disney Hall. Oh, I believe it was room 305B. I was in that room for two years. And the Lord really met me in that space. What was once darkness became light. And uh, He saved my life. In my life in this building. <sighs> Here it is, Disney Hall, where I felt God's presence. Like praying for something my whole life to really know God, to know His presence, and to know who He is. And, uh, this is where he showed me that. This is where he showed me his voice. This is where he taught me his voice. I remember being over here one day. This is a, this was Erie Hall, one of the old dining halls that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I remember walking through here and I was struggling that day, particularly with, um, you know, compulsive, intrusive thoughts and the Lord showed me a picture of all of those thoughts being put into a jar by his side and he had a lid on those on that jar with all of his thoughts inside and he said I'm holding those I'm holding those those won't go any farther those won't go anywhere I'm holding those and I'm holding you and in that moment I 
was undone and that's just one example of how he taught me his voice how he showed me who he really was because he's such a good father and all the way up there was where I lived and that's where God's presence showed up for me 305B Disney Hall SUNY Fredonia Good morning, it's the next day. Oh, I've got some Tim Hortons in my hands. It's early. I am headed to a garage to see about my car because um, turns out the muffler is hanging and looks rusted. So, trip I have to figure out stinking car things. Uh, I really just wanted to lay in the bed in the cabin this morning and just enjoy a slow morning but here we are. So I'm off to do that and um, hopefully they can fix it and get me in quick take super long um, and then after that I am going to have breakfast at my host's house and then go back home um, so it's 8.08 in the morning and um, head into the car garage cheers enjoyed my documented trip to Fredonia, my alma mater, and I pray that um, wherever you find yourself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, that you know that the Lord is with you, that he loves you, and that he has a plan for you. And if you ever need anything, um, please just feel free to reach out. Um, I'm here to talk to you. And, um, yeah, would love to just hear anything and everything that is on your heart. So, thanks for watching, and God bless.